Hello everyone and welcome back for another Paranormal Pit Stop. Tonight, we'll be exploring a popular state park expanse stretching between San Diego, Imperial, and Riverside counties in California that's held within a portion of the Colorado Desert comprised of more than 935 square miles, recognized as the largest state park in its respective state, and rumored to host a range of chilling supernatural infestations. Are you prepared to brave the history and hauntings of the Anza Barre Desert State Park. Historically, predating settlement, lands that now make up what we know as the Anza Borrego were utilized by tribes native to the region, such as the Coila, Capeno, and Kumeye, for thousands of years, as made evident by abundant petroglyphs and pictograms expressing their cultures and way of life. Much later, on December 13th of 1927, Governor C.C. C. Young of California would group together five leading conservationists as members of an initial state park commission. The following year, planning for parklands was started. In 1931, the process of land acquisition would begin, and in 1932, some of the first private lands to act as future park grounds would be deeded to the state, after which development was started on what was known as Borrego Palms Desert State Park. Park. In 1933, lands within Borrego Palm Canyon were deeded. In 1934, Marston lands within the Collins Valley would also be acquired. In 1941, the park was officially dedicated and opened up to the public, and by 1948, the expanse had reached its current size, though moving forward, it would acquire various other smaller plots. In the present, the Anza Borrego Desert State Park remains a popular recreation stop, offering over 500 miles of dirt roads and over 110 miles of hiking trails spread over 12 designated wilderness areas. It envelops both Borrego Springs and Shelter Valley, the former of which actually hosts the park's headquarters and offers ample opportunities for stargazing, as the site was also designated a Dark Sky Park in 2018 under the International Dark Sky Association. Chillingly, over the years, this sprawling expanse and the whole of the Borrego Springs area have been surrounded in a number of ghost stories, local legends, and purports of encounters with the strange and otherworldly. A first prominent fable ties itself to the Yaki Well, where it's told that on hot summer nights, three ghostly dancers can be observed. These strange, spectral forms are believed to be the spirits of a group of immigrants who met their fates while en route from Yuma to California. Within park bounds, Viacito Station is believed to hold a number of presences, including restless spirits resulting from a double homicide, a spectral white horse that some tell might lead the way to treasure buried by a 19th century gang of bandits, and of course, the infamous White Lady of Viacito, who it's believed might be the soul of one Eileen O'Connor, who, in her youth in 1850, fell ill en route to Sacramento, passed on, and was buried right at the station. The White Lady has also been known to appear suddenly at campsites after dark, startling all present, and has been observed drifting about the area in an ethereal manner as well. A second popular fable tells that after dark, throughout the massive stretch between the Superstition Mountains in Arizona and Seventeen Palms locally, a giant eight-foot-tall skeleton with a lantern inside of its chest has been spied lumbering about. While this creature may sound horrifying, and to those who encounter it, in the moment it likely is just that, this strange manifestation is actually thought to be the restless soul of a prospector who died ages past. To date, this towering skeletal thing has shown no aggression towards those who've encountered it, and some tell he's really either just searching for the lost phantom mine or simply looking for his final resting place. Two locations some suspect may be one in the same. At Carrizo Wash, which is located not far from Viacito, a phantom stagecoach has been spied shooting across the sands, pulled by a team of four ghostly mules, and driven by a lone figure who usually appears hunched over as if he's sleeping. This supernatural stage has been observed slowing to a halt for moments, right where the Carrizo station formerly stood, before continuing off and disappearing into the horizon. A third and final fable, and possibly the most famous legend surrounding this weathered park, tells of the ghost lights of Borrego. Like several other spook light phenomena we've covered in the past, the ghost lights of Borrego are usually spied after dark and are described as floating fireballs that drift above the landscape. 
Astoundingly, some of the first accounts of encounters with these eerie illuminations had them pegged as phantom lights and were documented circa 1858 by a Butterfield stage driver. Years following, the strange glows would also be documented by explorers, soldiers, prospectors, and a number of additional reputable companies and sources, with a bulk of encounters originating near Oriflame Mountain, through Borrego Valley, and in various surrounding regions. While many have since attempted to disprove or explain away the ghost lights of Borrego, all have been met in disappointment, as even the firmest of skeptics have later told of having their belief systems completely shattered upon beholding these otherworldly things. Thanks for joining us on this Paranormal Pit Stop. If you enjoyed our histories and ghost stories, subscribe to our channel, like this upload, and share us with all of your friends. We'll catch you next time.